Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about running Windows games through the Parallels Virtual Machine on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and how many CPU cores you should assign to your virtual machine because the answer is a little bit counterintuitive. So if you didn't already know, it's possible to run Windows 11 ARM as a virtual machine and play Windows games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac using the virtual machine software called Parallels. If you'd like to find out more about how to set this up, then please check out the link in the description which will take you to a step-by-step -step video tutorial. So when you set up a Windows virtual machine in Parallels for the first time, you might notice that it's not using all of your system resources. So I'm recording this on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, and this has 32 gigabytes of RAM, however only 16 gigabytes are allocated to the virtual machine. We also have 10 CPU cores, but only six CPU cores are allocated to Windows. So the reason this is done is because if you over allocate resources to your virtual machine, then the host, which is running the software in the first place, is going to run out of resources and everything will slow down in general. So therefore you only want to allocate half of your RAM and half of your CPU cores to the virtual machine. So because my M1 Max chip has 10 CPU cores, in theory the 5 CPU core virtual machine should run faster. However, in my last video, I demonstrated that the 4 core virtual machine actually runs faster than the 5 core virtual machine. So you can see that on the 4 core version on the left, we have a substantially higher consistent frame rate than the virtual machine on the right, and this is despite using fewer CPU cores. So what's interesting is that in an earlier version of Parallels, the virtual machine settings would default to 5 CPU cores if you had a 10 CPU core machine. And what's interesting is that if you try to set the manual CPU allocation to 5, it will actually give a warning saying that an odd number of processors may cause Windows apps to work incorrectly. And now in the latest version of Parallels, when you start a virtual machine, it's going to actually recommend 6 CPU cores instead of 5, which is a little bit odd because this is over the 50% mark. And what's interesting is that there are actually several situations in which 6 CPU cores do actually outperform 4 and 5 CPU cores as well. And so what I thought I would do is do some testing and I would actually test all of the CPU core allocations that I could do and try to see which one is best and which one you should use for your Windows virtual machine running on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I've tried to test every single CPU core allocation, but unfortunately some of them don't really work. So for example, one CPU core does allow Windows to boot, albeit very, very slowly. However, most games don't work on a single core. I've also tried to allocate nine or 10 CPU cores, but Parallels does not allow us to do this. Also, I've been experimenting with two CPU cores on certain games, for example, GTA 5 Benchmark. And two CPU cores is definitely below the minimum system requirements for this game. And although the frame rates kind of look okay, that's probably because most of the game world is not being rendered correctly. This also seems to have a major impact on the game logic and physics. So this is the jet fighter part of the benchmark and it's just not working properly at all. What I've done here is arrange all of the CPU core benchmarks into this layout. So we're starting with one CPU core down to eight CPU cores. Obviously I can't show the one CPU core as most games won't load on it, but you can basically compare all of the CPU core allocations and see which one is gonna be right for you with each specific game. So within these GTA 5 benchmarks, we can see some anomalies. So within the two and three CPU core counts, we're actually getting a higher frame rates than we'd expect proportionally per CPU core. And this is partially down to the fact that the game world has not rendered correctly. And so it's no wonder that the frame rates are higher here as there are actually fewer objects on screen for the virtual machine to render. However, it does appear fairly conclusive that the six CPU core count offers the best performance. So definitely for GTA 5, I'm gonna be recommending six CPU cores for that virtual machine. So here I'm running the game Hitman Absolution on Windows 11 ARM, and I'm using the identical settings across all of these cores. And you can see that the frame rate grouping is all very similar. However, you can see that the six core version of this game is running slightly faster than all the others. So this confirms that six cores works best for this particular game. So you can see in the actual benchmark results, the average frame rate of the six core version is 28.85, which is higher than all the rest. And here I'm running the game, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And what I've done here is I've created a save game where a guard walks across the screen and I basically loaded it up for each virtual machine just to compare them directly. As you can see in this particular case, the five core CPU virtual machine is running slightly faster than the rest. So I've done a similar thing here. I've created a save point where we're looking down on white run and you can see that the frame rates are quite low in general and that's just because of the view distance that we have set. We can see quite a lot on screen at once. But even at these low frame rates, we can see that the five core CPU virtual machine is outperforming the four and the six cores. So it's not always the case that six cores is gonna be better. In the case of Skyrim, five cores is the optimum number of CPU cores.
So here I'm running the game Halo Reach, and this is part of the Master Chief Collection. So this is one of the rendered cutscenes at the beginning of one of the early missions of Halo Reach. And here it looks like the 5 and the 6 CPU core count virtual machines work better, but it's actually very hard to say which one is definitively the best. And that's just because the 6 CPU core sometimes performs slightly higher than the 5 CPU core, but it's hard to give a definitive answer. When you're actually playing the game, I actually doubt you're going to notice any real difference between the 5 and the 6 core allocations. And here I've tried to match up the exact same point on the level, and it looks like the 6 CPU core version works best, but it's by no means conclusive. So I think one of the main takeaways from this is that 6 CPU cores is going to be optimum for most games. However, the actual difference between, say, 4 and 5 CPU cores is pretty minimal. So, for example, in Hitman Absolution, we're going from 4 cores with 27.36 frames per second to 6 cores, which is 28.85 frames per second. So it's barely a frame and a half difference between these two virtual machines. So the main thing to note is that there is an actual monetary difference between running 4 CPU cores versus 5 or 6 CPU cores. That's because the standard edition of Parallels is limited to only four CPU cores. Even though chips like the M1 Pro and the M1 Max are capable of running more virtual CPU cores. So therefore, if you use one of those chips, you might be tempted to get the Pro Edition instead, which is slightly more expensive. If you do decide to purchase Parallels, then please make sure to click on the link at the top of the description. This will help to support the channel and the work that I do. If you do decide to buy the Parallels Pro version, then you can enter the coupon code AppleWiki10 and you'll receive a 10% discount. So it's very interesting to see that Parallels have really embraced 6 CPU cores as this seems to perform the best. So if you start a new virtual machine and you turn on the gaming setting, then you're going to be getting 6 virtual CPU cores instead of the default of 5, which was on the previous version of Parallels. And whilst there is a difference in performance, I'm not necessarily sure that it's worth spending the extra money in order to get that performance. However, if you did use my discount code, then you'll be able to get the Pro Edition at a very similar price to the Standard Edition anyway. And if you're truly interested in getting the absolutely best performance out of games like GTA V on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then you're going to want to run this game through the compatibility layer called Crossover instead. This is easily capable of running GTA V at over 100 frames per second, and this is because it doesn't have the overhead of running the entire Windows 11 ARM virtual machine in the background as well as the game itself, and it has access to far more of the Mac's resources. If you're interested in finding out more, then please check out my video about Crossover version 21.1, which is the latest release. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.